Isha Foundation was established by Sadhguru in 1992 as an entirely volunteer-run international non-profit organization dedicated to cultivating human potential. Sadhguru, a yogi and visionary humanitarian, works tirelessly towards the physical, mental and spiritual well-being of all. Isha Foundation's activities range from powerful yoga programs for inner transformation to much-needed outreach projects for society and the environment. The Foundation is headquartered at the Isha Yoga Center in the south of India and at the recently opened Isha Institute of Inner Sciences in the United States on the Cumberland Plateau in Tennessee. At the core of the Foundation's activities is the distilled essence of the ancient science of yoga, referred to as Inner Engineering. The Inner Engineering programs are conducted globally in a variety of settings touching people from all economic and social backgrounds in an equally powerful way. From the villages of rural India and Africa to the world's major metropolitan cities, from the executive leadership retreats to the programs in the prisons of South India and the United States, people everywhere have been deeply touched and transformed. Sadhguru works with the world's preeminent leaders and institutions to foster peace, global understanding and international cooperation. His vision and understanding of modern social and economic issues have earned him the reputation of a speaker and opinion maker of international renown. Isha Foundation's mission is an endeavor to create an inclusive culture that is the basis for global harmony and progress. The transformation experienced in inner engineering programs has inspired many into action to improving the living conditions of the neediest and to preserve the environment for future generations. Action for Rural Rejuvenation is a rural revitalization program offering medical care, community rehabilitation and human upliftment to more than three and a half thousand villages in rural southern India. The project recently expanded its activity in Africa, in Sierra Leone. Village games and inter-village tournaments are organized for community joy, reducing addictions and promoting social bonding above caste, creed, religion or economic status. Isha Vidya, the Foundation's education initiative, aims to provide affordable, high-quality school education to children in rural areas so that the native intelligence of children has the opportunity to bloom. The uniquely designed pedagogy promises to produce confident, English-speaking, computer-skilled youth capable of productive participation in the economy while preserving the identities of their origins and culture. Schools are currently operating in four districts in the southern state of Tamil Nadu, with over 1,000 children benefiting from this new approach to education. Project Greenhands is a massive public reforestation effort aiming to plant 114 million trees. The project seeks to inspire people around the world to keep this planet habitable for future generations and establish a culture of care for the environment. Since its inception in 2003, Project Greenhands has mobilized over one and a half million volunteers to plant over five million trees. With its active and dedicated volunteer base, the Foundation's activities serve as a thriving model for human empowerment and community revitalization throughout the world. This approach has gained worldwide recognition 
and reflects in Isha Foundation's special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations. To turn inward is not possible through sense perception. Sense perception is essentially outward bound. You can see what's around you, but you can't roll your eyeballs inward and scan yourself. You can hear that. So much activity in this body, you cannot hear that. Even if an ant crawls upon this hand, you can feel it. So much blood flowing, can you feel it? In the very nature of things, sense organs are outward bound. But look at the other dimension. Let us examine the fundamental human predicament is this. Sense organs are all outward bound, but your experience of life is in a completely different way. Do you at least see me right now, even if you're not listening to me? <laughs> Can you see me at least? Use your hands and point out where I am. No, this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina. Don't you know the whole story? Where do you see me right now? Where do you see me right now? Within you, isn't it? Where do you hear me right now? Within you. Where did you see the whole world? Within you. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Have you? The whole human effort at one point is about survival, but once the survival is taken care of, after that is somehow to have a larger slice of life, isn't it? Hmm? One way or the other, whichever way you know best. If you know money, you're thinking of more money. If you know power, you're thinking of more power. If you know pleasure, you're thinking of more pleasure. If you know love, more love. Knowledge, more knowledge, it doesn't matter what's your currency. But you are constantly seeking a larger slice of life. You want something more to happen with your life, wherever you are. Isn't it so? There is something within you which wants to expand all the time. If I imprison you, in a five by five cubicle, you'll feel horribly imprisoned. Tomorrow we'll announce your liberation and liberate you into your ten by ten cubicle. You'll feel wonderful for a day. Next day again you feel imprisoned. We'll release you into your hundred by hundred cubicle. You'll feel great for three days. Again you'll feel imprisoned. It doesn't matter where I set the boundary. The moment you can feel the boundary, you want to break it, isn't it? If I set the boundary at the edge of the universe, the moment you can feel it, you want to break it. When you don't feel it, you don't mind. But the moment you can feel the boundary, you want to break that. So there is something within you which does not like boundaries. There is something within you constantly longing to be boundless. The physical nature of who you are, this body, you gathered it slowly, isn't it? You accumulated it, yes or no? Hmm? Yes. It's an accumulation. 
What did you have for breakfast? What did you have for lunch? Quinoa and seaweed and greens. Weed. <laughs> Some kind of weed. So you see it's weed from the sea. Over the afternoon this weed has transformed itself into a human being, isn't it? This body is just the food that you've eaten, isn't it so? Or it's just a piece of this planet. All the countless number of people who walked upon this planet before you and me came here, where are they? All topsoil? So this is just a piece of the planet that you slowly gathered. So there is an intelligence here, there is a competence within you which can turn weed into a human being. Can you believe this? Do you have this or no? Yes? There is an intelligence within you, there is a possibility within you which is capable of transforming a weed into a human being. If only you even… you brought even a drop of this intelligence into your conscious living process, you would live magically. I'm sure in your whole life you've interacted with so many people by now, your parents, your spouse, your friends, your partners, your children and whatever other associations you have. In all this, has one human being happened one hundred percent the way you want them? for you? Hmm? Nobody happened, not even your dog hmm? He does his own thing, isn't it <laughs> Nobody happened hundred percent the way you want them, that's very good. But the problem is, this one is not happening the way you want him, that is the problem. That one is not happening the way you want it, that's not the problem. This one is not happening the way you want him or her, that is the problem, isn't it? If this one happened just the way you want him, would you keep him ecstatic or miserable? For sure, isn't it? If there was a choice between pleasantness and unpleasantness for yourself, would you choose highest level of pleasantness or unpleasantness for yourself? For yourself, for sure the choice is pleasantness. What you want for your neighbor may be debatable, but <laughs> about you there is no question, isn't it? So if your body becomes pleasant, we call it health. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it pleasure. If your mind becomes pleasant, we call it peace. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it joy. If your emotions become pleasant, we call it love. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it compassion. If your very energies, very life energies become pleasant, we call this blissfulness. If it becomes very pleasant, we call it ecstasy. If your surroundings become pleasant, we call it success <laughs> So these are the things that every human being is seeking – pleasantness. Pleasantness in the body, pleasantness in the mind, pleasantness in emotion, pleasantness in energies and pleasantness in the world that we live in. It's all you're seeking, isn't it? All the life situations you may not determine, but what you make out of it you determine. It is you. Every lousy experience that you have, every difficult situation that you face should make you wiser, not wounded, isn't it? Only then you will be open to experience of life, otherwise you will become close to experience of life. You will become like a living grave. If you don't want to experience life, you are telling the life within you that you want to be dead, isn't it? That's a message, isn't it so? Because once life is here, it experiences everything that happens around. But how you experience it is determined by you. And that you can take it to one hundred percent control of who you are. This moment you can take charge of the interiority in such a way, what happens within you is one hundred percent decided by you and nobody else but you. If you do such a thing, will you be blissful or miserable? 
this is the most sophisticated machine on the planet, yes? The gadget, isn't it? <laughs> yes or no? Is there a better gadget? This is the gadget. <laughs> You're too enamored with your i… iPad, iPhone, <laughs> i… i… but you're missing the eye <laughs> This is the gadget which produced all those gadgets. And this gadget with what you manufacture, with seaweed, wow, this is phenomenal, isn't it? Yes or no? With seaweed, with a banana, with an egg, with just about anything, a piece of bread, with this you're manufacturing the most sophisticated machine on the planet. That level of intelligence and competence exists within you, but rarely accessed, rarely accessed. See, all these things, whatever I am saying, you could have seen it any moment yourself, isn't it? Because you're too busy, you don't see it. I'm not busy. I'm very busy in the world outside, but within myself, I'm not busy. If I sit here, you know, like once in a way when I shut myself off, four days, five days, if I sit in one place, I don't have a single thought in my head. I'm just empty-headed, nothing. Because right now, your hands, are they staying where you want them to stay? No? Why? They are staying, isn't it? Suppose your hand becomes like this, you would, you would look little ridiculous, isn't it? Now that's what is happening with your mind. It's quite ridiculous the way it's going on. Compulsive activity, isn't it? Yes or no? Compulsive activity. Your only comfort is others cannot see it. The very source of creation is throbbing within you. If you remain unaware of it, it behaves as if it doesn't exist. This is the fundamental human predicament, that is, whatever you are not aware of does not exist for you. Please say this. Yes? Right now you are sitting here, look at the dinosaur standing there, don't turn back. There is a dinosaur standing behind you, such a huge animal. You are not aware of it, doesn't exist for you, isn't it? The very source of creation and intelligence and competence which can create this whole body, out of what? A piece of bread, a banana, you eat whatever, it becomes a human being. There is that level of intelligence and competence. But if you are not aware of it, it's like it's not there. If you pay enough attention to it, if it comes into your awareness, then suddenly everything about you is magical. What is normal for you, people think is mystical and magical. Anything that you do not know, anything that does not fit into your way of thinking and understanding, if anything is beyond your understanding, you will label it as magical or mystical, isn't it? No, there is nothing magical, mystical. It is just reality, such a fantastic reality such an absolutely magnificent reality, mostly untouched by human experience. It's my wish and my blessing, you must touch it someday. Isha means that which is the source of creation. Kriya means an inward action towards that. Karma means outward action. If you perform action with your body or your mind or your emotion or your physical energies, we call it karma. If you perform an inward action which does not involve any of these, then we call this kriya. So Isha Kriya is an extremely simple process but a powerful tool to constantly move from untruth to truth. We will do this process right now. You need to understand a little bit about what this is. Is everybody breathing here right now? Hmm? 
Please check. Don't take things for granted. It doesn't go on forever, it'll stop someday, you know. Or you're breathing right now, you? Please check, don't it, don't just take it for granted. Are you really breathing? You're there, okay? This inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation. Next inhalation did not happen, you're gone. See how fragile you are. Just if this one inhalation does not go, wherever we look you won't be around. At the same time, so fragile human life is, at the same time, how sturdy it is, how many things a human being can do in this world. On one level, it seems to be so fragile, just look at it and see. It doesn't come back. Too fragile, isn't it? You're taking it for granted, you're not conscious about it. If you become conscious and watch it, it's a damn fragile life. At the same time, how sturdy it is, how many things it can do. This is the beauty of creation. Everything is tenderly balanced. So tenderly, you cannot disturb it, <laughs> not easily. The whole creation is like this, it's just like that. That shows the mastery of the creator. It is so tenderly balanced, that means that shows, that manifests the mastery of the creator. That which creates is of such mastery that it can afford to keep it so tender. So that is the adversity of the creator. One breath, if you do not inhale, you're gone. But <laughs> that's the confidence in design <laughs> that the creator has. So this breath is not just about exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in yoga. We call this the Kurmanadi. Breath is referred to as the Kurmanadi. Now, if I ask you to watch your breath, which is the most common thing that people are doing these days, you don't get to watch the breath. You think you're watching the breath, but you're not watching the breath. You're only able to notice the sensations caused by the movement of the air. If one who is sitting next to you touches your hand. You think you know the touch of the other person, but you do not know. You only know the sensations generated within your body. You do not know how the other feels. You only know what kind of sensation happened in your body. Yeah? You understand what I'm saying? So right now, you do not know the breath. You only know the sensations caused by the breath. So when we say Kurmanadi, we are not talking about the sensations, we are talking about the breath itself. Kurmanadi is referred to as a string, it's like a string. An unbroken string, it's going on. And this is the string which ties you with this body. If I take away your breath, you and your body will fall apart. What you thought is one will become two, that is the first deception. There are two behaving like one, a deception is on. So if I pull out the breath, you and your body will fall apart. We don't want you to fall apart, but if your consciousness travels with the breath, if your awareness travels with the passage of the breath keenly enough, then you will see, distinctly see, these two are not one. What is you and what is your body will stand apart. What is you and what is your mind will stand apart. If you 
and your body-mind combination stand away from each other, then suddenly you will find your ability to use your body and your mind goes into a phenomenal scale. If right now, if you have to count from one to ten, right, the highest is ten, if that is so, if you're attached or if you're involved with this body, you're less than one, that's where it is. If these two things come apart, suddenly you can rev it up all the way to ten. Your ability to use the mind and the body is so greatly enhanced that you almost look superhuman for somebody else. But I'm telling you, this is human. This is not about being superhuman. This is about realizing being human is super. Yes, not a simple thing to be human. Now the Isha Kriya just involves this. Your thought is playing a very important role in your life right now. So let's employ that and your breath is vital. So let's employ that. And with it, without your awareness, you wouldn't know that you are even here right now. If you're not aware, you do not even know whether you're alive or dead, or whether you exist or not. So these three ingredients, your breath, your thought and your awareness, in the right combination, if you use them, you will see slowly a little bit of distance arises between you and your body. Now, you're very distinctly moving from untruth to truth. So what we will do is sit in a cross-legged posture and keep your hands open, facing upward. Sit with your face slightly upturned. The moment you sit this way with a slightly upturned face, you will see naturally your focus will shift between your eyebrows. So maintain this mild focus between your eyebrows and now what you do is, you take these two thoughts, with inhalation, one thought, with exhalation, another thought. I will walk you through this. Whatever the duration of the thought, let that be the duration of inhalation and whatever the duration of the other thought, let that be the duration of your exhalation. With inhalation, we will take this thought, I am not this body. With exhalation, you will take the other thought, I am not even this mind. I am not this body, I am not even the mind. Now, oh, I am not this body, what does it mean? Will I lose my body? That which you accumulate, you can claim it's yours, but the moment you think it's me, you're actively heading towards insanity. As I sit here, if I suddenly say, this is my vessel, you will think, well, Sadhguru seems to have a problem. <laughs> but you know, there's a reputation of being wise. So you will sit for some more time. After some time I say, this is me, you will say, let's go. Because the moment I say this is me, it seems like absolute insanity, there's no sign of sanity. But this has happened and it's continuing to happen. The food that you eat, when it arrives on your plate, you say this is my food, you eat it and immediately you say this is me. insanity, but you're in a socially accepted levels of insanity, okay? You cannot be yet pushed into an asylum because then we will have to build a worldwide asylum, WWA <laughs> So, this is an open asylum. You know, there's something called an open prison. 
just like that. This is an open asylum, but it doesn't matter. The moment you start thinking an object which is not you as yourself, you have taken the first step towards madness. It only takes life to push you harder. If difficult situations arise continuously, you will head there towards madness. Otherwise, you will manage with acceptable levels of madness. This world, the way it is, you have to address every aspect, otherwise people cannot do anything. Now, question will pop up, but why sound ah? Oh? Why should I say ah? Oh? <laughs> if you open your mouth, you have to explain why, otherwise it doesn't work in today's world. So why sound ah? Oh? As there is a physical body, there is a mental body and an energy body. In the structure of the energy body, there are seventy-two thousand nadis or pathways or channels in which the vital energy moves. These seventy-two thousand nadis meet and redistribute in one hundred and fourteen different places. There are one hundred and fourteen important junction points. So these one hundred and fourteen junctions are referred to as the chakras. So there are one hundred and fourteen chakras in the body, one hundred and twelve within the physical body, two slightly outside the physical body. Of all these one hundred and fourteen chakras. There is only one chakra in the whole body where all the nadis or all the pathways meet at one point. That is known as the Manipuraka, which is physically located about three-fourths of an inch below your navel. So the navel is known as Manipuraka or it is known as the maintenance center, body is maintained from here because this is the only place where all the pathways of prana or the vital energy meet and redistribute themselves. Even when you were in your mother's womb, where was the maintenance pipe connected to you? It is at the navel. So today that has been severed but still the maintenance center is in the navel so this is the Manipuraka chakra, this is the only place where everything meets. If you utter the sound ah, you will see the reverberation begins just about three-fourths of an inch below your navel and spreads right across the body. So, reminding yourself through your breath and thought and awareness that you are not the body, you are not the mind, if this message has to go viral to every cell in the body, if the message has to go, it has to be taken to Manipuraka. 
then only the information goes everywhere, otherwise it gets localized. So when you utter the sound, ah, if this has sunk into you, if this awareness has sunk into you that I am not the body, I am not the mind, then it reminds every cell in the body in case they have false notions, just like you. It takes the message across the body. So just seven times, uttering this seven times, the sound ah, will take the message across and after that you simply sit. Every day, every day if you do this, you will sit one day when you sit here, your body is here, your mind is out there, what is you is somewhere else. And even if you open your eyes, if you become like this, that there is a distinct separation between you and your body, between you and your mind, this is the end of suffering because there are only two kinds of suffering that you have known in your life, physical and mental. Once there is a little space between you and the body, between you and the mind, that is the end of suffering. Only when the fear of suffering completely disappears from your perception, only then as a human being you will explore the full depth and dimension of who you are. You will dare to explore the full scope of what it means to be human only when there is no fear of suffering. Otherwise, as long as fear of suffering is there, every step that you take is only half a step. And if you keep taking half steps, you become half a life. If you want to become a fully blossomed life, it is very important that there is no fear of suffering and that is only possible when there is a little distance between you and the body, between you and the mind. As long as you are identified as the body, as long as you are identified with the mental process, fear is a natural process. So sound A ah takes the message across the body, to every cell in the body. So to establish this, we will do this right now, Sit with your face slightly upturned, hands open, spine comfortably <coughs> erect. As uh, I utter these two sentences, with inhalation you take this thought, I am not this body. With exhalation, I am not even this mind. I am not the body. I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind. I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind. I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind. I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even the mind. I am not the body, I am not even the mind, I am not the body, I am not even 
and the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. <coughs> I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. I'm not the body. I'm not even the mind. Continue to do that.
utter this sound after me. Keep your eyes closed and just sit still with your face slightly turned upward.
ಸಂಗವೀನಿ ರಮತೆ ಚಿತ್ತ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಿ ರಮತೆ ಚಿತ್ತ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತೆ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತಿ ನಂದತೆ Take your own time, take your own time, slowly, very slowly, open your eyes. <laughs> 